TV and the Highway Magazine. And I'm here with Chris Van Hook from Clean Green Certified. Chris, thanks for stopping by. Oh, thank you. We appreciate being here. Yeah, and uh, Chris, we featured you in the first issue of the Highway California. Yep, we're Clean Green Certified. Uh, we're so excited. Chris not only is doing this work, but is a lawyer and a marine biologist. <laughs> and he's only 59. Hey. Sorry, Chris, I, I'm revealing your age, but I was like, wow, you really got a lot done in a short period of time there. Um, but we're really happy to have you on board with us. We're happy that you're going to be writing for the magazine uh, regularly. Yep, we're this is all about it. helping transform culture and how we work with our resources. So tell me a little bit, you got started in 2004. Tell me what got you from marine biology into the into Clean the, Green Certified. Well, I will. And first of all, Julia, I want to thank both you and Skunk Magazine and welcome everybody to the 2016 Emerald Cup. Yes. The Emerald Cup undoubtedly Th is the one years. best national cup event of the year. And I remember when Skunk Magazine Absolutely. got involved in it a couple of years ago, and it went from a small little farm mm -hmm. event to the internationally Amazing. famous event it is today. So yeah. I'm proud to be here. Emerald Cup. Emerald Cup 2016. Welcome everybody Thank you, to Tim it. Thank you, Tim Blake and, and Skunk Taylor TV. Blake. Yep. So, well, I uh, was a marine biologist, like I mentioned, but then I'm also a USDA organic certifier, and I've been in agriculture my whole life. So I went to law school late in my 40s and uh, when I graduated from law school uh, the California medical the California medical cannabis laws were just starting so I uh, started the clean green certification program and it's modeled after the USDA organic program it's gotten international recognition it's been featured on National Geographic it's been featured in a book written by the American Bar Association and of course in skunk magazine as well so last year we certified about 20,000 pounds in five different states. Wow. This year we certified close to 35,000 35, pounds in California, Oregon, Washington, Colorado, and Nevada. And we've gotten requests from uh, other states as well. So It's really beautiful because you're legitimizing what has been made illegitimate over decades, which was taken from farming culture in America, which was so entrenched, the hemp plant. Mm -hmm. And, and growing hemp, uh, and then you're giving legitimacy back. And that's important work, is, is helping people to have tangible systems that help legitimize the work they do and, and, and help organic farming practices flourish. You know, that's true. You know, when we started certifying farms 14 years ago uh, in California, there were a lot of environmental uh, problems and concerns, legitimate concerns. There were uh, roads that were unpermitted, uh, uh, processing rooms that weren't clean, there weren't hand wash stations nearby. A lot of the things that we've implemented in the Clean Green program years ago have now almost become standard practice in the industry today. And I've always been very proud, very proud uh, to be representing the cannabis industry and helping to bring some of that legitimacy to it. Yes, thank you for your service. <laughs> you gave that way. Patrick King is over there. You work with him a lot. Yep, we sure do. We um, sure do it. Yep, we do it. Helping the soil lots king. of farmers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's the soil king. Everybody knows that. <laughs> so, yeah, no, so we're, we've it's got important. You help farming communities. It's like a ripple effect, right? You well, must have seen it. Well, we like with ma my <laughs> marine biology, you can see as things start to propagate, yes? Yeah, oh, yeah. No, We're we working on a very broad <laughs> scale here. <laughs> we got to watch this industry grow quite a bit. You know, when we started 14 years ago, uh, you know, people you know, were very hesitant to even have me up at, to their farms. But because I was a medical cannabis compliance attorney, I was able to extend attorney-client <laughs> privilege. So that really started the you whole You worked thing. it on both ends there, Chris. Work, you work. got it. <laughs> don't worry, I'm a lawyer too. Yeah, yeah don't, you can trust me, I'm a lawyer. Yes. You know, so, but then uh, really what we did is we built our business on keeping people out of court. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't, we built our business on making, you know, keeping people compliant. Yeah. You know, there's a lot, awful lot of law work that's cost effective and, and keeps people out of court. That's what we try to do. You help people feel confident. One of the things we've been talking about with a lot of different people is that part of cannabis plant medicine is for people to move away from systems of fear right. and towards systems of empowerment. And when you instill confidence in somebody, right. 
you help heal that kind of disease of our society, right? That we are powerful, that we can be uh, filled with wisdom when we pay attention to the systems that we're integrally a part of, right? Yeah. That's your whole work is basically giving people confidence in how to, to know and, and trust what they're doing is right. Well, you know, quite often I was the first sort of compliance person out at a farm. And um, it's been very interesting. And the Clean Green Certified Growers have now gone on to win the Top Awards since 2010. Yeah. They've won the San Francisco Times Cup, the Emerald Cup, San Francisco Patients' Choice. The list just goes on and on. Mm. And when we started back uh, in, you know, 14 years ago, people thought you really can't grow good cannabis organically. Yeah. But we've proven over the years that not only can you grow excellent cannabis organically, but you can grow the world's finest cannabis organically. Absolutely. And, and really, the growers that come to the Clean Green program, you know, are the best in the world. It's true. And what Tim is doing, too, with uh, attempting to have stronger, it's an evolution, of course. Mm -hmm. And nothing's 100% no. ever. It's a spiral. <laughs> I got into a heated debate with somebody who thinks it's a black and white kind of thing, and it's no. just simply not. That's never the way nature works. Nature works slow, and it works consistent until change comes lasting over time. And it seems like the same evolution with the Emerald Cup mm. and with what you do as also with standards. Standards evolve. And the more knowledge that we get and the, the improved systems that we get, we can keep evolving and improving the standards, right? No, absolutely. You know, we base, but what we do, we base the Green Green program on existing agricultural and food handling regulations. So unlike another organization that might say, well, we're going to develop the regs or we're going to develop these new regulations, we just feel it's important to teach the farmer the regulations as they actually exist today. And so when we come to a question in the Clean Green program, we go back to the USDA organic program to answer that question. But they are evolving. You know, when we first started, we had never heard of diesel dope. And then once, you know, when that came about, we said, well, that's not certifiable. And years ago, the indoor cannabis industry was very consumptive. And the outdoor quality was not perceived to be as well. That's good. But now over the past 14 years, the carbon footprint and the energy consumption of the indoors come down quite a bit. But the quality of the outdoor has certainly risen quite a Absolutely. bit as well. Absolutely. Yes, yes. So it's come out of the closet oh. over the last oh, it's decade. Come, it's come out from under the shade. Yeah. You know, And so now you're getting, you know, like here at the Emerald Cup, you're really getting the finest cannabis grown in the world today. I want to touch on one thing from the back that we were just speaking on. Because this is one area that gets knocked and it's not just in certification for organics, but also in the science side, the lab side, mm -hmm. is that a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, how could they allow that certain pesticide in? And, uh, organics has been trampled with. It's been trampled with in the industry. A lot of people, I find, being in organic textiles before I got into the cannabis industry, mm -hmm. I find that basically, yeah, Morgan, <laughs> Morgan testing. Yeah, Brandon over here. You should come on camera. Okay. Oh. In here. All right. Um, that was Brandon. You should come on camera if you want to stop the flow, man. <laughs> um, but what I was saying is, is that a lot of people, I feel like one of the things that's important, and I think you should definitely do an article on it, is um, the fact that organics, the name, the word, the definition of it has been trampled with a bit. There's been a lot of uh, uh, just hypocrisy or people doing things. Uh, people don't realize that because as organics evolves, because the uh, definition of it evolves, that we have to keep redefining it almost every year or uh, um, do you understand what I'm saying well the the USDA organic program is the gold standard for agriculture around the world but how about these yeah. people that have gotten in and they've kind of skirted there's these loopholes oh, and they put and, the, and the standards that right. no. answer that or speak to that because well, a lot of people are they often like to say well just because it says organic 
doesn't mean that it's so. And we had, you know, obviously what happened in Colorado with people claiming things that weren't well, later were tested for things that uh, were not. Good point. First so I'm of just all, want to talk to that. Event. No, good point. Yeah. First of all, there is no organic cannabis. There is no organic cannabis because it cannot be certified as organic because it's not a federally recognized agricultural crop. Yeah. So anyone that says their cannabis is organic is really saying, I know nothing at all about the organic program. So there is no organic cannabis, number one. Number two, um, in, in uh, Colorado, I I in every other agricultural crop, whether it's apples, beans, or zucchini, if you're making the claim that it's organic, within a month or two, your county ag commissioner will come and confirm that you are, in fact, certified organic. Mm -hmm. But in the unregulated world of cannabis, unlike every other agricultural crop, people can sort of say anything they want. And the reason why is because the uh, governmental entities have not been tasked with running that down. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you if you were in tomatoes or broccoli or beans claiming to be organic, you would have an ag inspector knocking on your door within a month or two to confirm that you were. So as cannabis moves into a more and more legal world, you're going to see an end to that false claims of organic. Okay. And I've had people say, um, if it, you know, all my stuff's organic because I have it tested and they don't find any pesticides in it. Well, that doesn't anywhere begin to encompass the entire aspect of organic farming, where you've got erosion control and building the soil. And organic means that you're not using any synthetic pesticides, not that none were found in your lab. So, um, and there's a husbandry element. There's a working with the land element and how you're using your resources as well. Absolutely. It's a holistic picture. Absolutely. You know, just like organic farming for any other agricultural crop, the organic cannabis or lima bean farmer needs to be much more engaged with the farm. They need to have, play a much more active role in the management. Conventional farming is easy because you can go out and say, we're going to spray today for spider mites. And you can spray a chemical compound on there and you won't have a spider mite for the next eight or nine months. But with organic farming, you have to be much more aware. You have to be careful not to bring spider mites in in the beginning. You want to make sure that you identify them early on mm -hmm. to an onset, that you can hit them with neem oil or bring in predator insect, predator mm -hmm. mites at that time. So you have to play a much more active role in it. But um, You're functioning as a steward. I as a steward, sure. as a as a <laughs> as a protector who basically pays attention to how nature works, right. and and listens. If you're an and organic farmer, you, you have yes, to do that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that and that's what the highway is all about. That's why we're really happy that you're going to oh. be writing every issue. Oh, yeah. And tell us what's coming up in the year ahead because it's very hard to reach you, actually, uh, Chris Van Hook. <laughs> you're like <laughs> so always somewhere, like world traveler. So no. what what's coming? for clean green in the year ahead just give us a little Good. snapshot well uh, like I said we, we just about doubled our, our uh, certification poundage this past year I think two yeah, thousand tell us how much uh, well, uh, last year we certified about 20,000 pounds in five states okay. California Oregon Washington Colorado Nevada okay uh, this past year we certified close to 35,000 pounds the uh, same states same five states mm -hmm. I think 217 we've done a lot of exciting things we're forming a, um, a clean green co-op for our smaller farmers to join so that they can aggregate aggregate their production and play in the larger market nice we've formed a cooperatives are beautiful oh, yeah this is a real agricultural cooperative it's going to be operated as a not-for-profit all of the farms will be clean green certified in it everyone will know what the cost that's the renaissance are. My grandpa was a Cuban revolutionary and he taught me about cooperatives when I was like oh. 12 years old, uh, uh, 14, uh, and I helped him do an initiative in our community for a health cooperative because he said, Julie, this is how the people get the power back. This is how we work with solidarity and sustainability to make, you know, help our communities thrive. And yeah. that's really he ins was a great inspiration. Love you, Grandpa. He's gone. That uh, helped teach me about what I could do when I started working with John at Skunk. Yeah. And then transform the highway so that we could have this feeling of sustainability and solidarity 
and follow more what the plant is attempting to teach us with symbiotic relationships. Symbi you know, symbiotic relationships in the cannabis industry are how businesses grow. Yeah. You know, with uh, reputable symbiotic relationships within the cannabis industry are going to yeah. work. And really, I've got to say that this magazine is going to be an excellent magazine for anybody that's interested in the cannabis industry this or is currently about permaculture. working. Permaculture. Absolutely. We got the probiotic wellness group, Grow Kashi. You know, you're going to get more Alan. information, more practical information from this magazine than so many other magazines that are out and about nowadays. It was a, you know, the marketplace sort Thank of gets you. crowded with, uh, with uh, magazines. And but John is here with us. <laughs> yeah. We're fighting a case in Canada. I know, I heard. Against genetics. And uh, yeah, John is with us in spirit. I know. And he appreciates your presence too at Skunk. We really, and, and the highway now, we really appreciate it, Chris. Well, we appreciate being involved. Again, like I said, I remembered when Skunk Magazine got involved with the Emerald Cup. And you really took it from a small little farmer's group to yeah. what it is today. Yeah, Tim so. and John getting together, talking Absolutely. about moving it from the Mateel. Even moving before it that, to moving Sonoma. it from 101. Yeah, yeah, to 101. that's right. No, oh, man. That's right, <laughs> exactly. Moving it from so yes, the only thing I, I can say you. about the are. Emerald Cup is you're either here or you're not. Yeah. Be here, but if you can't be here, at least you're here on Skunk TV. Yes, thank you so much for coming. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye.